The salt spray diner clung to the rocky shore of Misty Harbor like a barnacle, weathered and worn but refusing to yield. Samantha Ray stepped inside, the tinkle of the bell lost beneath the crash of distant waves and the squawk of circling gulls. Well, look what the tide dragged in. Moe's gravel rough voice rasped from behind the counter, a half smoked cigarette dangling from his lips. If it isn't Sammy Ray, the prodigal daughter. Samantha slid onto a cracked vinyl stool, the ghost of a smile tugging her wind chapped lips. Hello, Mo? Coffee? Black? The old man snorted, snatching a stained mug from the rack. Ten years. Ain't seen hide nor hair of you since your daddy's funeral. Now here you are, pretty as you please. He slid the steaming mug across the pitted formica. What brings you back to this salty old rock? Samantha wrapped salt-stiffened fingers around the mug, seeking its warmth. The chill of the sea clung to her bones these days, no matter how far she roamed. My father, she said softly. He's still haunting me, even from the depths. Moe's shaggy brows knit. Edmund? Thought the sea took him. So did I. Samantha reached into her coat, the crinkle of weathered paper harsh in the weighted silence. She withdrew a ragged leather journal, the initials ER barely visible on the wave-battered cover. Until I found this. Mo leaned in, nicotine-stained fingers twitching toward the journal like a moth to flame. What's that, then? My father's legacy. Samantha flipped through the brittle pages. The secrets of a dead man's heart laid bare in faded ink. He spent his whole life searching for something out there, beneath the waves. Something he was willing to die for. Aye, Mo muttered. Edmund was a man possessed. Ever since he found them carvings in the cave. Samantha's head snapped up, eyes flashing. Carvings? What carvings? The old man shifted, jaw working around words unsaid. Ancient things. Older than the sea herself. Terrible, beautiful. A shudder rippled through his wiry frame. Spoke of a power hidden in the deep. A treasure beyond imagining. Samantha's heart thudded painfully against her ribs. Her father's fevered scribbling swam before her eyes. Coordinates, cryptic symbols, a crude map, thought Dolly. Did he find it? She breathed. The treasure? Mo shook his grizzled head. Dunno, girl. But it consumed him. Day and night, he'd stare at the marks. Mutter into his self. His faded eyes misted with memory. And then, the storm took him. Biggest gale I ever saw. They say he steered his boat straight into the teeth of it, screaming about his destiny. Grief and disbelief warred in Samantha's chest. Her father, her brilliant, rational father, undone by mad obsession. It couldn't be. The journal's final entry seemed to mock her, the words stark and damning. Soon, I will hold eternity itself, no matter the price. Samantha snapped the journal shut, jaw clenched. She had to know. Had to understand the siren song that had snared her father's mind and sealed his fate. Even if it meant facing the ghosts of her own past. Even if it meant facing him. Jack Tanner was exactly where she knew he'd be. Halfway up the mast of the Calypso, salt wind ruffling his sun-streaked hair as he worked the rigging with deft, callous hands. Samantha's traitorous heart stumbled at the sight of him. A decade apart, and still he stole her breath. The golden boy of Misty Harbor, less with a pirate's grin and the devil's own luck. And once, for a fleeting summer, he'd been hers. Permission to come aboard? She called, proud that her voice didn't waver. Jack froze, a coil of rope gripped white knuckle tight. Slowly, disbelievingly, he craned his neck to stare down at her. Samantha? He swung down to the deck in a haze of sun and salt, lithe as the boy she'd loved. But the wary shadows in his eyes were all man. Is it really you? In the flesh. She lifted her chin, pulse thrumming with a decade of unspoken history. I need your help, Jack. A cynical half-smile twisted his lips. And what could the esteemed Dr. Ray possibly need from a humble fisherman? The taunt stung like a jellyfish's lash. Not a fisherman, she bit out. A diver. 
The best wreck diver in Misty Harbor. Her fingers tightened on the journal, its secrets searing her skin. I need you to help me find my father's treasure. Jack's eyes widened, then narrowed. Your father? Edmund's been dead for ten years, Sam. What? Treasure? I don't know. The admission scraped her throat, raw. But he died for it. Died chasing some... some myth carved in an ancient cave. She thrust the journal at him, a feverish light in her eyes. These are his last words, Jack. His legacy? I have to know why. He took the battered leather with reluctant fingers, the brush of his skin against hers an electric shock. Jaw tight, he flipped through the crackling pages, stormy eyes flickering with each cryptic line. These are coordinates, he murmured, brow furrowed. Bearings for a dive site. But, I know these waters, Sam, I, there's nothing out there but rock and brine. Then we'll look deeper. Desperation clawed at her chest, tangled with grief and the tattered remnants of youthful longing. Please, Jack, help me solve this final mystery. Help me find the truth. For a long, painful beat, he stared at her, the weight of their history heavy in the salt-tinged air. Then, slowly, he closed the journal and handed it back. All right, he said, voice roughened with feeling. I'll help you, Sammy. For Edmund. And for the girl I used to know. Relief crashed through her like a riptide. Thank you, she whispered. Jack held up a calloused hand, eyes glinting. Don't thank me yet. If this treasure is real, we won't be the only ones hunting it. As if summoned by his words, a figure stepped from the shadows of the dock. Tall and pale, with eyes like chips of winter sky. Hello, sister, drawled Ryan Ray. Going for a little swim? The waves whispered against the hull as Samantha faced her stepbrother, Hackles, rising. She hadn't seen him since the day of their father's funeral, when he'd cornered her behind the church, liquor on his breath and greed in his eyes. Huff, he'd hissed, spittle flecking her cheeks. Huff of everything, that's my right. The lighthouse, the boats, every penny of the old man's estate. I'll see you in court. But Samantha had walked away, left the bitter tangle of her father's legacy in the rearview mirror as she forged a new path. Marine biology grants, research expeditions, a doctoral thesis on the lost cities of the deep. She'd built a life on the bones of her grief, far from Misty Harbor's drowning pool. Until the journal surfaced like flotsam, dragging her back to the troubled tides of her youth. Ryan dot dot. She kept her voice level, a decade of practice concealing the old hurt. What brings you to the docks? Her stepbrother smiled, sharp as a hidden shoal. Oh, just tying up loose ends. The family business, you know. His narrowed gaze cut to Jack, blue as a gas flame. Dangerous waters out there. Easy to get, lost. Jack shifted subtly, angling his body between Samantha and her stepbrother. Didn't take you for the caring type, Ryan. Worried about your sister's safety, are you? The larger man's smile didn't reach his eyes. We rays have to look out for each other, especially with such tempting prizes at stake. Samantha's breath snagged. He knew. Donna Alney. Somehow, Ryan knew about their father's treasure. Cold fear unfurled in her gut. Her stepbrother had always been a boy of vicious appetites, for power, for wealth, for the sick thrill of others' pain. What depths would he plumb to slake his ugly thirst? This has nothing to do with you, she snapped. Go back to your whiskey and your whores. Ryan's eyes flashed, a vein pulsing in his temple. Still so high and mighty, aren't you, sis? The golden girl. He took a menacing step forward, the dock creaking underfoot. But I know what you're planning. What you hope to find. A sneer twisted his patrician features. Did you really think you could cut me out? Me, a rightful heir? There is no heir, Samantha shot back, heart pounding. The treasure is a myth, Ryan. It died with Dad. Liar. Ryan lunged for her, meaty hands clawing. Jack moved to block him, muscles bunching bell. A crack split the air, sharp as thunder. 
Ryan howled and staggered back, clutching his bleeding hand. The next one won't be a warning. Sheriff Tess McKay stepped out from behind a piling, a still-smoking pistol trained on Ryan's chest. Steel glinted in her storm-gray eyes. This is my harbor, she growled. I won't have any blood spilled here but the fish and the gulls. Is that clear? Ryan snarled through gritted teeth, blood welling between his fingers. For a taut moment, murder flashed across his face. Then, with a final venomous glare, he slunk into the shadows. This isn't over, he spat. You can't keep the Ray legacy from me forever. Shaken, Samantha turned to Tess, a shuddering breath escaping her lungs. Thank you, Sheriff. The older woman holstered her pistol, mouth pressed thin. Don't thank me yet. Your brother's a dog with a bone. He won't stop till he gets what he's after. She eyed Samantha keenly. And something tells me there's more to this treasure hunt than meets the eye. Jack put a steadying hand on Samantha's shoulder, warm through her cardigan. Tess is right. Ryan's dangerous. Maybe. Maybe we should rethink this dive. Samantha whirled on him, eyes blazing. No. We can't let him win. This is my legacy. My birthright. I have to see it through. In the maelstrom of her emotions, her gaze snagged on Jack, the furrow between his brows, the concern in his robin's egg eyes. Despite the years and the hurt, he still had the power to settle her. Anchor her like a safe harbor. Slowly, she covered his hand with her own, desperate for his steadiness. I need this, Jack, she whispered. Need to know what demons drove my father to his death. I can't move forward until I face the past. For a long-weighted beat, Jack searched her face, and in the space between heartbeats, the old connection flared. Right. Dight. Bittersweet. Dot. He exhaled, strong fingers tightening on her shoulder. Okay, he murmured. Okay, Sammy. We'll see this through. Just be careful. I couldn't stand to lose you twice. Emotion thickened Samantha's throat. Once, she'd walked away from this man, this town, too young and headstrong to face the wreckage of her father's shadow. Now, with darkness circling and time running out, she had to cling to the light. Cling to him. You won't lose me, she vowed, soft but fierce. We started this story together. It's time we finished it. And as the autumn wind keened through the harbor, the lighthouse beam cutting the gathering dusk, Samantha Ray steeled herself to face the deep. No matter how dark the waters, no matter what waited in the depths, the sea was a black mirror, cold and impenetrable. Samantha stared into its glassy eye as the calypso cut through the swells, salt spray stinging her wind-chapped cheeks. Somewhere below those fathomless depths lay her father's final obsession, a treasure of gold or glory birthed in blood and madness. With each nautical mile, Samantha felt the weight of her ancestors' secrets pressing down like the crush of the abyss. We're coming up on the coordinates. Jack's voice was a low rumble beside her, his eyes fixed on the instruments. In the wan light of the wheelhouse, the angles of his face were stark, sculpted by time and tide. You sure about this, Sammy? Samantha's fingers tightened on the rail, the ache of old scars throbbing beneath her skin. I have to be. The truth is down there, Jack. I can feel it. He glanced at her, something ancient and aching in his gaze. The truth can be an ugly thing. It can cut to the bone. Then I'll bleed. The words rasped out of her, raw and defiant. I've bled for this town, this family, all my life. What's a little more? Jack was silent for a long moment, the growl of the engines filling the space between them. Then quietly, you never did know when to quit, did you? Not even when the world was falling down around you. Samantha's throat closed. He was looking at her the way he used to, when they were just a boy and a girl drunk on summer and each other. Before the storm took her father. Before the shadow took her love. Jack, she whispered, the old longing a twist beneath her ribs. I, anyway, named. The depth finder screamed. They wrenched apart, Jack lunging for the instrument panel. What the hell? 
Samantha squinted at the readout, adrenaline spiking. It's an anomaly. A void in the sea floor, right beneath us. Jack toggled the sensors, brow furrowed. That's impossible. I've dived this reef a hundred times. It's solid granite. Not anymore. Samantha's heart rabbited against her sternum as she traced the impossible shape on the screen. A perfect blackness, fathoms deep and wide as a cathedral. He was right. It's here. Jack cut her a sharp look. We don't know what's down there, Sam. And with Ryan gunning for the treasure. I don't care. Her voice shook with a decade of unspent grief, of unanswered questions. This is what I came for. What I lost everything for. I'm diving. For a beat, Jack looked like he might argue. Then his shoulders slumped, the fight draining out of him. Stubborn as a barnacle, he muttered. Fine, died. But I'm going with you. Relief and trepidation warred in Samantha's chest as they kitted up, muscles moving on autopilot. The weight of the tanks, the constrictive embrace of the wetsuit, the cold kiss of the regulator, it was like stepping into someone else's skin. Dr. Samantha Ray, scourge of the scientific symposium, falling away. Sammy the lighthouse keeper's daughter taking her place, wild and reckless as the wave. As they perched on the calypso's stern, the void yawning beneath their fins, Jack reached out and caught her neoprene-gloved hand. Stay close, he said roughly. Whatever happens, we do this together. Samantha could only nod, her heart too full for words. Then, with a final breathless look, they rolled into the abyss. The cold was a living thing, pressing in from all sides as they sank into the blue-black nothingness. Samantha's headlamp carved a thin shaft through the gloom, the beam swallowed by ancient, endless dark. Down and down they swam, the void widening with every meter. Pressure squeezed Samantha's chest, the weight of generations bearing down. Her father's last dive. What had he seen in this lightless place? What had driven him into the jaws of the hungry sea? A flicker in the murk. Samantha froze, limbs going stiff. There, caught in the spill of her lamp, a glint of gold. Impossible. She kicked forward, pulse thundering in her ears. Jack's warning tap on her shoulder barely registered as she closed the distance, the golden glimmer growing brighter with each stroke. And then she saw it. Rising from the sea floor like a mirage, ancient and alien and achingly beautiful, a statue of a woman cast in pure gold. Her features were strange, ethereal, caught somewhere between human and fee. Sightless eyes gazed up at Samantha, a secret smile curving her gilded lips. Samantha's breath caught in her throat. It was real. Her father's treasure, his terrible obsession, here within reach of her trembling fingers. She stretched out a hand, brushing the statue's cool cheek, cheek. A shadow unfurled from the depths. A sleek, dark shape, larger than any creature of the natural world. Jack's scream was a burst of bubbles, lost in the roar of water as the thing swept him into the abyss. Jack! Terror and anguish ripped through Samantha, her very soul crying out. She lunged after him, fins churning the water water. An iron grip closed around her ankle, wrenching her back. She twisted, headlamp wild, heart in her throat. Ryan grinned at her through his mask, an oxygen tank Jerry rigged to his back. In his free hand, a wicked dive knife gleamed. Madness danced in her stepbrother's eyes as he pulled her close, the blade kissing her throat. The treasure is mine, he mouthed, avarice and insanity contorting his face. Father left it to me. Samantha thrashed in his grip, lungs burning, desperate for a weapon. Her fingers scrabbled at her weight belt, closed on the hard length of her father's journal. With a silent scream, she smashed the waterlogged leather into Ryan's faceplate. Once, Twice, a third time, until the glass splintered and crimson billowed in the water. Ryan howled, bubbles exploding from his mouthpiece as he clawed at his eyes. His knife slashed wildly, slicing Samantha's arm in a bright flare of pain. The statue. Heedless of the blood clouding the water, the searing burn in her lungs, Samantha kicked for the golden woman. 
Her outstretched arms were a prayer, an apology, a reckoning generations in the making. Daddy, she keened through gritted teeth. I understand now. Her hands closed around the statue, and the sea itself screamed. Light exploded through the void, searing, blinding. The shadow thing writhed, a piercing wail echoing in the marrow of Samantha's bones. And the statue shifted, changed. Gold flanging into scale in tooth and talon. The mermaid opened impossibly blue eyes and smiled. Daughter of land and sea, she sang, the words thrumming through the water like siren song. You have broken the curse. Freed us with your blood and your sacrifice. Tears burned Samantha's eyes, understanding crashing over her like a riptide. Her father, his death, the secret that had haunted her all her life. It led here. To this moment. This truth. Jack, she gasped out, salt and copper on her tongue. Please. The mermaid inclined her head, a queen granting a boon. She raised a hand. And Jack was there, coughing and sputtering, whole and hail in the circle of her supernatural light. His eyes found Samantha's through their masks, wide with awe and disbelieving joy. What now? He mouthed. Samantha could only shake her head, a strange giddy peace settling over her. The old wounds, the ancient ache in her soul. They were gone. Washed clean by the tide of fate. We go home, she said simply. We live. And as the mermaid released them, as they ascended hand in hand through water turned warm and welcoming, Samantha knew her father's legacy had never been gold or glory or the secrets of the deep. It had always only been love. The calypso limped into misty harbor as dawn broke over the waves, battered but unbowed. On the deck, wrapped in blankets and each other, Samantha and Jack watched the sun paint the sea in shades of hope and renewal. He wanted to set them free, Samantha murmured, her voice scratchy with salt water and revelation. The merfolk. That's what the carvings in the cave were. A map to their prison. Jack pressed a kiss to her wind-tangled hair, the simple touch an anchor in the whirlwind. And you did it, Sammy. You set them free. Set yourself free. Tears tracked down her cheeks, bright and clean. Not just me, she whispered. Leaning up, she caught his lips with her own, the kiss tasting of brine and benediction. I couldn't have done it without you, Jack. Any of it. He smiled against her mouth, calloused palm, cupping her jaw. Partners, he said, rough and real. In all things. Forever. Forever? The word settled into Samantha's bones, into the cracks and scars left behind by a lifetime of ghosts. She felt it take root, grow, blossom into a promise. A future. Here, in this place she'd tried so hard to escape. With this man she'd never stop loving. And as the Calypso glided into port, as Misty Harbor stirred to life in the buttery light, Samantha Ray, lighthouse keeper's daughter, marine biologist, woman reborn. She finally, finally came home. The end.